Hey guys, a very good day to all of you. Let's talk a little bit about protein today. Do you know the most abundant proteins in the animal world and the whole of the biosphere? Yes, it's the collagen in the animal world and ribulose, bisphosphate, carboxylate, oxygenase, rubisco in the biosphere. Rubisco is the most abundant protein as it is an enzyme involved in photosynthesis during carbon fixation. Now let's know more about the animal proteins, its function and structure. Proteins are large-sized macromolecules having one or more polypeptides. Polypeptide is a linear chain of amino acids linked by peptide bonds. Do you know how a peptide bond is formed? Peptide bond is formed when a COOH group of one amino acid reacts with an NH2 group of the next amino acid by releasing a molecule of water. The term polypeptide is often used interchangeably with protein. However, a single polypeptide must be at least 50 amino acids long in order to qualify for the term. As there are 20 types of amino acids in a protein, a protein is called a heteropolymer. Let's move on to the functions performed by the proteins in living organisms. Mainly, proteins are required for growth and tissue repair. Besides this, protein performs many functions. Transport proteins like GLUT4 enable the transport of glucose into cells across the cell membranes. Structural proteins like collagen act as intercellular ground substance for skin, bones, tendons, and ligaments. Defense proteins such as antibodies fight against infectious pathogens. Communication proteins like insulin act as hormone, trypsin act as enzyme, hemoglobin act as respiratory pigment and receptors for smell, taste, hormones, etc. Now let's move on to the structure of proteins. Biologists describe the protein structure at four levels namely primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Let me discuss them in detail. Primary structure refers to the sequence of amino acids arranged in a polypeptide chain. It gives the first, second, third information of amino acids known as positional information of amino acids in a protein. Hypothetically, a protein is represented as a straight line formed by amino acids, where the left end is represented by the first amino acid and the right end is represented by the last amino acid. First amino acid is known as N-terminal amino acid and the last is known as C-terminal amino acid. In secondary structure, some amino acids of the polypeptide chains are linked together and bend due to heaviness of the molecule. They either bend to form helix or beta pleated sheets to form alpha helix and beta sheet secondary structures respectively. In alpha helix, there is an intramolecular hydrogen bond formation between the amino acids thereby giving the polypeptide a right-handed helix or spiral shape. Such alpha helix is seen in human keratin and fibroin extracted from silk fiber. In a beta pleated sheet, two or more polypeptide chains are held together by intermolecular hydrogen bonds between different amino acids. Exceptionally, collagen helix has three polypeptide chains which are strengthened by establishing hydrogen bonds and locking effect of 
proline and hydroxyproline amino acids. In tertiary structure, long protein chain is folded upon itself like a hollow woolen ball, giving rise to the 3D view. Such tertiary structure is found in myoglobin. Tertiary structure is necessary for many biological activities of proteins, such as making an active site for a substrate to bind. If the tertiary structure is disrupted, the protein loses its activity. In quaternary structure, several polypeptides, also known as subunits, are arranged as linear strings of spheres, or one upon each other in the form of a cube or plate. Such structure is seen in hemoglobin. It has two alpha subunits and two beta subunits. By now we have learned about the function and structure of proteins. Let's see the classification of proteins based on their composition into simple and conjugated proteins. Firstly, simple proteins are composed of amino acids only. Examples include large globular proteins such as egg albumin, serum globulins, and glutalins of wheat or rice, and fibrous proteins such as keratin of skin and hair and collagen of connective tissues. Secondly, conjugated proteins are composed of a simple protein combined with a non-protein part. The non-protein part is called the prosthetic group. Now let us move on to the types of conjugated proteins. Nucleoproteins such as proteins contain the prosthetic group, namely nucleic acid. Metalloproteins such as ferritin contain the prosthetic group, namely metals. Chromoproteins such as cytochromes contain the prosthetic group, namely pigment. Phosphoproteins such as casein of milk contain a prosthetic group, namely phosphoric acid. Lipoproteins such as chylomicron contain a prosthetic group, namely lipids. Glycoproteins such as mucine contain a prosthetic group, namely carbohydrates. This concludes this session on proteins. I hope you enjoyed it, and it will be of some use to you in the future.